All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna to show that R is connected, which is surprisingly not as easy to show. And in fact, try it out and see how far you get. And by the way, uh, you can't just say, oh, it's connected because it's path connected, because actually the proof of path connected implies connected uh, relies on the fact that R is connected or that intervals are connected. So we really have to show this directly. And how do we show this? Well, as usual by contradiction, so suppose not. What does that mean? Then there are A and B. They are A, B, non-empty, okay. uh, open, disjoint. So A intersect B is empty set and A union B is all of R. And the proof relies on the following. So step one, first of all, since A and B are non-empty, there's an element in A and an element in B. So fix A and A and B in B. And of course, A is not equal to B because uh, A intersect B is empty. So without loss of generality, assume A is less than B. A is less than B. So what you have, here you have A, maybe here, and then here you have B. And what we would like, in other words, is to consider the biggest interval that's in A. So in some sense, a comma x, where x is in a. So, and in particular, let's consider the following set. So let s be the set of points x in a comma b, such that the interval a comma x is included in a. So that's what I was trying to say. So kind of the biggest interval that starts with a and that's included in a. Now, S is non-empty because A is in it by just considering the trivial interval A comma A. Moreover, S is bounded above by B because any X here has to be less than or equal to B. So bang, uh, by the least upper bound property, S has a least upper bound. And let's call it M. So let M be the soup of S. And the proof relies on the following. So essentially, here's the idea. We will show that M is not in B and M is not in A, which is a contradiction because the union of A and B is R. So step two, so claim M is not in B. Well, suppose it is, so sorry, M is not in B, so suppose uh, M is in B, okay? So suppose M is somewhere here, then, then remember B is open. So since B is open, What this means is we can fit a very small interval around M that's still in B. So in other words, there's some R such that M minus R and M plus R is still in B, that interval. Um, so there are, so there is R such that M minus R comma M plus R is included in B. But here's the thing, look at M minus R. M minus R is less than M, which is the supremum. So you have the situation where you're not the best student, so there's a student that's better than you. And so what we know, we know that there is X and S, is x and s with x, well, it's greater than m minus r, 
but also just by definition of the least upper bound, x is less than or equal to m. But then what do we get? What we get is that a comma x, again by definition of x being in S, we know that a comma x is included in a. And of course x is in that interval. And therefore x is in a. On the other hand, what do we know? We know that x is in m minus r comma m. X is in m minus r comma m and that's included in m minus r comma m plus r. But what do we know? Well, by definition of r, this interval is included in b. So, in fact, x is also in b. And therefore, x is in the intersection, which is a contradiction. So, x is in a intersect b, which is empty. That's a juicy contradiction. And therefore, a contradiction with what? A contradiction with the fact the assumption that x was in b, m was in b, and therefore m is not in b. So uh, m is not in b, but because a union b is all of r, this implies that m is in a. And in fact, the contradiction will be that m is not in a. However, in order to do that, we'll do a couple of intermediary steps, which seem like, why are you doing this? But I think once you see the proof, you'll see why we need them. So now, before showing that m is not in A, let's actually show that m is in S. So step three. m is in S. Well, suppose not. So suppose m is not in S, what that means by definition is that the interval a comma m is not included in A. So in particular there is x, x in the interval a comma m with x not in a. Now here's the thing, uh, could x be equal m? Well no. Notice x is not equal to m because, well, first of all, and here's where we needed the stuff from before, m is in a, but x is not in a. And again, this is not multi-track drifting. Uh, we can't have both at the same time. So in particular, if x is in a comma m but not in m, we actually get x is less than m. But again, m was a supremum. And therefore, again, you're not the best student. There's a student better than you. So there is. y in s with y is bigger than x. But then what do we know? Well, first of all, the interval a comma m, sorry, or the interval a comma x, well, because y is bigger than x, that is included in the interval a comma y, but by definition, of a comma y, we get that um, this is included in a. Because again, uh, s was defined to be the set of number x such that a comma x is included in a. And here we have it with y. But then we have a problem because notice x is in that set and therefore x is in a. But literally we define x such that that is not in an A, and therefore we have a contradiction. 
a contradiction with what? A contradiction with the fact that x was not in s, and therefore x, m is in x. So, uh, and therefore m is in s. A contradiction with what? A contradiction with the assumption that m was not in s, and therefore m is in s. So. In other words, the supremum is actually a max in this case. All right, and now next thing, what we want to show is in fact, so it's possible that m equals b, but we will show it's not. So step four. So claim. In fact, m is strictly less than this b, which makes sense in our picture. So this was uh, a. And then we said m was in a, and we want to show m is actually less than b. So if not, then we get m is greater or equal to b. And again, it might be trivial, but um, um, and therefore what we get, we get well b is in the interval a comma m. But the interval a comma m, because m is in s, that is included in a. And therefore, b is an a, which is a contradiction. Because we assume a and b are disjoint, and b was in b already. All right, and last but not least, we can finally prove our result. So claim, in fact, we assumed m was in a. Let's actually show m is not in a. And again, after that, we're done, because uh, then we get a contradiction. All right, well, suppose not. not. And then we can just play the same spiel as before. So suppose not, then there is. So since m is in a, And since m is in a and a is open, there is some radius r positive such that so if you take m minus r and then m plus r is included in a. And by the way, don't confuse this with R from a couple of previous steps. Although I'm pretty sure you already forgot the previous steps. So uh, just think of a new kind of R. And well, we do need a couple more assumptions. So first of all, assume R is so small that this open interval actually becomes a closed interval. And moreover, remember that M was less than B. So actually, choose this r so small that this is also still less than b. So we can do this because we just need the two smallness assumptions. One that this becomes a closed interval, the other one that this becomes less than b. And then look at the following interval. Look at a comma m, no sorry, a comma m plus r. First of all, since m plus r is less than b, this is actually included in a comma b. Okay. So in fact, what I'm saying is m plus r is in a comma b. But now, this interval, you can write this as a comma m union m comma m plus r. If you want union, in fact, even more, m minus r comma m plus r. Now, and here's where we needed the assumption or the fact that m was in s. Well, since m is in s, this is included in a, literally by definition of s. And moreover, since, um, what's it called? Since my assumption is in, thing is included in A, this is included in A, and therefore this bigger interval, A comma M plus R, is in A. So A comma M plus R is included in A, and also M plus R is in A comma B. 
But this implies by definition that m plus r is an s. And that contradicts the fact that m was the biggest one. So that contradicts the fact that m is a supremum of s. And therefore, in contradiction with our assumption that m was in A, but in fact m is not in A. And therefore, what we get is m is not in A and not in B, and that's a contradiction. So, because A union B is all of R. All right, and that's the proof that R is connected. So you see, not as trivial as you might have thought, but if you like this and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.